Bravo Show, all the top tunes that... Hey, Mulligan! What are you doing? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Getting just what they get in the big house. It's the Joey and Rory Show! This week's special guest, Richard Lee! This week's episode brought to you by Roper Apparel. Wear the West. And now, RFE TV's Sweethearts. Here they are, Joey and Rory! She wants an old farmhouse with a white picket fence and a porch that goes all the way around. With a tall oak tree and a big backyard and a tire rope swing hanging down. She wants chickens and a cow and a horse in a barn by a garden she can plant in the spring. Yeah, it's easy to see all that she wants is everything. She wants a preacher in a church with a steeple and a bell they can ring when we say I do. And a veil and a dress and 400 guests and a couple dozen bridesmaids too. She wants a sunny day in June, a European honeymoon and a big old diamond ring. Lord is killing me cause all that she wants is everything. Is she worth it? Boy, you better bet she is. She's so perfect, I give her all I got to give. If she wants a moon and the stars and all of my heart, well, she can have the whole shebang. She ain't asking much of me, all that she wants is everything. She wants a man who can cook, who can grill, who can change a transmission on a minivan. Who can fish, who can shop, who can hunt, who can listen and occasionally ballroom dance. She wants a guy who can hold her when she ain't in the mood And when she is, she wants a guy who can bring All the love she needs, man, all that she wants is everything Yep Is she worth it? Boy, you better bet she is She's so perfect, I give her all I got to give If she wants a moon and the stars and all of my heart Well, she can have the whole shebang she ain't asking much of me, all that she wants is everything. Uh-huh. What else? That's all? Is she worth it? Boy, you better bet she is. She's so perfect, I give her all I got to give. If she wants a moon and the stars and all of my heart, well, she can have the whole shebang. She ain't asking much of me, all that she wants is everything. Just the bare necessities, all that she wants is everything. Oh, come on, I'm not that bad, am I? No, not at all. This is just fun. Well, speaking of fun, y'all don't go anywhere because we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. Album from ACM winners Joey and Rory. When I'm gone. Order yours now at joeyandrory.com. This week's special guest, Richard Lee. My name is Richard Lee. I uh, grew up in McLean, Virginia, and I live down here in beautiful Cornersville, Tennessee now. Uh, the inspiration for I'll Get Over You goes back a long ways. I think I was uh, uh, in the second year or third year of college and I dated a gal who uh, eventually uh, we had to break up and I was of course saddened about it and everything. And But I had paid a visit to Nashville and I'd come back with a, a real sense of how they, they configured their songs. And so I turned my broken heart into a, a little song and it was recorded. It was heartfelt. 
it uh, made me a lot of money. And so I went out of my way to break my heart as many times as I could between then and now. <laughs> no, that's not true. In Nashville, they say, uh, for every broken heart, you get two hit songs. And I don't think that's far from wrong. A writer only has a handful of hits at the end uh, of his career that he can look back on and, and say, I had some hits. And it's a miracle to have any, because it really should be considered a business of misses. <laughs> you know, it's one in a thousand to do anything. And I've been lucky enough to have a little batch of three-minute miracles that uh, keep me going and give me a sense of pride when I look back on my career. I feel like I actually did something. One thing about this heart of mine There ain't no hurt it can't mend with time You don't leave no scars behind I'll get over you I'll find me a gal one day Who's not scared to give her heart away when I do, it's safe to say that I'll get over you. I'll get over you. I'll get through, and when I do, I'll be good as new. From now on, think I'll lay low I'll talk fast, you see, but I'll move slow You taught me all I need to know About getting over you Sometimes think I love you still Sometimes wonder if I always will but I know it's just until I get over you I'll get over you I'll get through and when I do I'll be good as new when I Sometimes think I love you still Sometimes wonder if I always will Love for you so hard to kill But I'll get over My wife and I get to travel all across the country and eat at some really neat little diners. And let me tell you, there's some great food out there. But I'm awful partial to our little family restaurant right down the road. Let's check in there at Marcy Joe's and see what they're cooking today. Y'all come on in. Stay wherever you want. Now Marcy Joe's is about as country as you can get. The paint's peeling, the walls are leaning, and we've got license plates to cover the holes in the floor. But believe it or not, we offer a little city food now and then, and today's recipe is one of my personal favorites, bacon herb spinach quiche. This is something that we offer a lot of times during the summertime, so we'll have that as a special. Mm -hmm. And you actually used to make this all the time in the I summer, and I loved it. I've never made it personally. But, and actually you're going to teach me today okay. how to make it. Well, let's so. get started. So Marcy, what do you have here first? So we have the old crust 
that we've actually shown you guys on a previous show. And then you've got it all curved out here, real pretty. And then you've got your cheese. And this is uh, Colby Jack cheese, I believe. But you can use, I love smoked Gouda. Oh, so that's I think really that good. would be really good in yeah. here. And you don't have to line the cheese, but I, I love cheese. And anytime yeah. you can add a little bit of extra kick to it and put it on the bottom, it has a little bit of a layer effect. Yeah. And so anyway, and then I think you're going to start your base, yes. right? Yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat our little skillet. You get about a skillet this size. In here I have just a fourth of a cup of butter. Heat it, melt it down nice and nice and easy. And then you're going to add a one cup of chopped onions. You're going to let these simmer in here. And I love the smell of onions. I do too. I love that smell. And once these get nice and simmered, you get them kind of just translucent. You don't want to get them too dark or too brown or anything like that. We're going to kick this heat up a little bit. But they'll just start sizzling away. Once those start sizzling, get heated. You're going to add one tablespoon of just all-purpose flour. This is creating your be your base so that this is going to be the thickening agent right. for your quiche. And Rory, you know, he's not really a big quiche guy. I'm not really sure why. I think he thinks that it's just not manly enough or yeah. something. But I love a quiche. After you put your flour in, you're going to do just a half of a cup of milk. If you want it to be really creamy, you can add maybe some half and half. If you oh, have some of good. that, that'd be really nice mm -hmm. too. But uh, we're going to do milk. So I'm going to let this really thicken up. You're going to stir it constantly. You don't want this to stick. So what do we have next, Marcy? Well, I'm doing this. OK. Uh, I've got four eggs already scrambled and whipped up in here. And then you're going to take about 3 fourths cup of milk. Is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. You're going to pour it in your egg. And then you're going to take some basil. Is it basil? No, that's. Or no, parsley. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take parsley. And then you're going to take chives. And you're not, I mean, I don't know how much, maybe just about a Well, if you a have tablespoon. fresh herbs, fresh oh, herbs yes. are always best. Yes. But if you don't have fresh herbs, just do about a teaspoon of each of your basil, your chives, or your parsley. You can mix up. That's what's great about quiche. Yeah. You can make quiche however you want. You can that put different great. vegetables in it, different cheeses in it. Um, but these are great. And then you're going to add more seasoning, just your yep, salt and the pepper. the salt and pepper, and probably just like a, what, a teaspoon? Mm-hmm. And then same thing with pepper. That looks really good. I love the smell of this too. And this is, you know, it's pretty much an easy dish to make. The great thing is you can make your pie crust at night, the night right. before. And then you can make this stuff in the morning. And it just whips out really nice. And it's just a nice alternative. It's great for brunch. Yeah. That's already starting to thicken up. It it's looking great. good. Mm -hmm. So, and then also you're going to have four or five strips of bacon that's already cooked. And then you're just going to chop it up really fine. And then you're going to add that in here. This has got nice and mix it all together. And so while that's ready, that's perfect, Joe. Mm -hmm. You're gonna add all that together there. It smells so good. I love the smell of cooked on. Oh, I do too. Something quite like it. And you're gonna stir that. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Now you'd said something about the cheese that you mm -hmm. didn't. You didn't go to the grocery store well, or something, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to get the Swiss cheese. But Swiss cheese or mozzarella is really what you want to use because right. it's really mild. But we have a really mild cheddar cheese here, and it's a nice and thinly It'll shredded. It'll still be really so It's going to be awesome. Mix Probably this up really nice. A cup of that. And this is about a handful of fresh spinach. You do not want to use frozen spinach because what that is, is it has a lot of water. And that will water down your quiche. And it's Looks just great. not going to turn out right if you use always want to use fresh. That looks really, really great. We're just going to pour it all in here. Mm -hmm. Pour it all in your unbaked pie pan. Preheat your oven to 425. Bake that for about 15 minutes. And then turn it down after 15 minutes is done. Turn it down to uh, 350. That looks really great. And bake really it for another great. 25 minutes. And put it in your oven. And then you are going to have a finished product like this. That's beautiful. And this is just gorgeous. See how nice and set up it is. And we have a very special guest today coming all the way from our neighborhood, Mr. Jordan Valdez. Come on up here, buddy. How are you doing? Doing good. How so are you doing? So good to see you. Good to see you too. I met Jordan when I first got married with Rory, and you were our neighbors. You were about 10 years old then. Yeah. And now you're over at Samford University. I am. College wow. studying. It's going well. It's going great. And so you far. just happened to be on break. Just happened to be. While we're doing a taping. And this boy has always been an eater. And I don't know if you've ever had my quiche or not. I don't think I have. I don't no. think you have. But I have a feeling you might like this. This is going to turn out. 
So that looks great. That does look good. A little salt and pepper if you like extra, but I don't think you're gonna All need right. any extra. Give it that a try and see All what right, you let's think. See. I can't believe how big these boys put I up to be. I know, I know it. What do you think? That's pretty good right you there. You like it? So oh, even yeah. as a man, you can you can eat a quiche, huh? I mean, I, I think so. <laughs> oh, good. Well, good. Thank you so very great much. to see you. Good Thanks, see you Jordan. Good to see you on. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our bacon spinach herb quiche here at Marcy Joe's, where we're changing lives. One bite at a time. You ever watch that show Gilligan's Island? That professor on there can make a radio out of a coconut. Now why can't he fix a hole in the boat? And Tarzan, why don't he have a beard? If Wiley Coyote can afford to buy all that acne crap he buys, why don't he just go out to eat? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Joey and Rory Show. Today we have a very special guest with us, Reba Blaylock Walker. Come on out, Reba. Reba, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate this. Sure. Uh, tell me, have you ever been here before? Oh, indeed I have for many, many years. Well, <laughs> how is that? Because I was born and grew up here. Our family owned the house from 1937 until 1999. We grew typical farm crops, corn and wheat and hay and whatever. We had cattle, we had horses. Well, there's still a few cows running around and there's Joey's garden out there. Right, oh, that, that garden produced wonderful canning sessions for us. And it's still producing for her. For her today. She, she loves it. She really does. Well, thank you for telling us about that and being on the show today, Reba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't touch that dial, folks. Stay with us here on the Joey and Rory Show. You go from rags to riches. We bought this old farmhouse in 1999, before I met Joey. It was just the girls and I back then, and I was writing songs for a living, and the first song I ever got recorded was by Colin Ray, and it went to number one, and we made some royalties, so uh, the girls and I came out and found this old farmhouse, and we bought it. When we first came out here, it was pretty run down. Uh, I didn't know any better. I really thought that I could fix it up. I'd never fixed up anything before, but I thought I could. One of the first things we did when we bought this old farmhouse is I took a hammer and I broke through the plaster that was right here and I opened it up to try and find the fireplace that was in here. It was covered with boards and then underneath of that were bricks and then underneath that was the stone. And I pulled it out and I was so excited about it because it hadn't been opened up since about the 1940s. What's amazing is I can't believe somebody would cover something that beautiful up. I mean, it was just so nostalgic and I mean it really is kind of the centerpiece of the whole farmhouse when you walk in the side and in the kitchen. The people who built this farmhouse are named Calvin and Sarah Hardison and they built it in the 1870s and they're buried in the cemetery behind the farm out in the field and that's where you see us in a little cemetery on our When I'm Gone video and you can see it from right here at the window in the kitchen and it's where we want to be buried someday. One of my favorite things is that in research in the history, Calvin and Sarah's old maid daughters are named Molly and Viva Hardison. And they were school teachers in the area. And there was a little school on the other side of the river called the Hardison Institute. And they taught there. And a number of people that are still around, uh, their parents went to school there. Anyway, in researching them, I, I just knew that. I knew they were teachers. I didn't really know anything else about them. And I was reading about the music history of this area and it tells some stories about how certain people were really well known for um, a gospel group that happened in the 1940s or different things that happened but there's one paragraph that really caught my attention it says the Mrs. Molly and Viva Hardison 
of Hardison Mill wrote songs and had at least four songs published by S. Brainerd Sons and Company in Chicago. Hmm. That is amazing that a hundred years before we bought this farmhouse, there were two little ladies writing songs in our house. It'll be interesting to see what happens a hundred years from now. Yeah. See if somebody's looking back at this farmhouse and going, some crazy people lived here who were filming a television show. <laughs> and they're buried out there in the cemetery. <laughs> they're going to be haunting us. <laughs> These floors are made of poplar cut right here on this land. Their tongue and groove together, every single board by hand. They're nicked and scarred and splintered in need of some repair. But you know every cut is perfect and every nail is square. They don't make them like that anymore. You can't buy that craftsmanship in some old store. For a hundred years they've been walked on. They'll be here after I'm gone. They still make them, but not like that anymore. And that car out in the driveway, well, it's made of Detroit steel. And it was stamped out in a factory, every nut and bolt and wheel. It's seen a lot of miles of highway since it was new in 63. But it still cranks every time I get in and turn the key. And they don't make them like that anymore. Today they're built in factories on foreign shores. You know with pride they used to say, made here in the USA. They still make them, but not like that anymore. That picture on the mantel, well, that's my grandma and grandpa. They were the sweetest, kindest, hardest working folks you ever saw. Through the good times and the bad, the pain and the happy tears, they never spent a single night apart in 57 years. They don't make them like that anymore. When they got married back in 1944. They vowed to stand side by side, and Lord, they did till the day they died. They still make them, but not like that anymore. Yeah, they still make them, but not like that anymore. We sure do have a beautiful life here, don't we, babe? Yes, we do. God's been awful good to us. Yes. Planting the garden and watching it grow And keeping it country on the radio That's important to me Yes, it is Yeah, that's, that's important to me Don't forget about what's most important to you I'm Joey And I'm Rory Tune in again next week same place, same time.